Hi, Kelly Young Silva here with the Thunder Round of Hunting Souls. I'm here with Sunny Mabry to talk about Hunting Souls. <laughs> what is Hunting Souls? Well, it's a movie about a, a couple who has a, a young child who has been sick lately and uh, it's, it's really disturbing for them and um, their marriage is starting to become difficult because of it and I think they realize that it might be about something else when uh, strange things starts happening around the house. Uh, Angie, the character that you play, is a protector. Are you that way in your real life? I am. Uh, I'm very protective of my family and my dog. and <laughs> Overly protective, I'd say, to a point. <laughs> uh, what attracted you to this movie as far as playing the role? Well, it was a great script. I... Um, I loved the idea of doing horror. This particular horror was a little different than anything I'd seen before. And uh, I, I just, you know, I want to get in there and, and work on stuff like this. It's, it's very fulfilling to when do this. When you read the script, Diego, uh, English is not his first language. So what helped you? Because I know that you said to me, no, I realized really early reading the script that that just, this was somebody that this was not their first language. Right, so um, when I first got the script, I, I started reading it, and as I always do, I looked up Diego on, I look up all the, you know, produ producers, directors, everybody on IMDb, and I looked him up, realized he was from Colombia, and uh, had done some projects there, and so when I was reading the script, I, you know, I realized that some people could have passed it over because if you don't know that, then you could just perceive it as, maybe grammar that hasn't been checked or, you know, right. some typos or, you know, strange wording. Uh, but I, I realized, no, no, that it, that's not the issue here. It's just this person, English is not their first language. So I thought I'd in investigate further and, and read the entire script and see if I like the actual story. And I did. And uh, I talked to Diego, you know, once I found out that he was interested in me, I, I was able to have direct communication with him. And um, I asked him, would he mind if I kind of put, put some of these things into my own words a little bit or collaborate with him on a way that I might say it as my character? Right. And he was totally open to that. So cool about, you know, working with me in that realm. So, um, so it was great. I, I wanted to do it. Well, we were blessed to have you, and you're fabulous in the movie. What is one of your favorite lines from the movie? I would need homework. I would have to go back through and just really think about every day there. But I had so many good moments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was different filming in, uh, in the pandemic? Well, I think this was like my second project I'd done since the pandemic, and it was really weird, you know? I, everybody was handling it differently, and SAG had certain rules about what we had to do on set and the protocol and everything, but it was comforting to, it, that was before the vaccine, mm -hmm, actually. Mm -hmm. and so yeah. It was comforting to know that we all were getting tested and nobody could take their mask off around another person without knowing for a fact they tested negative that day. That being said, a test is not a vaccine. And um, just because you're getting tested doesn't mean you're going to not get it and give it to someone as soon as you become contagious. So taking that mask off to have my makeup done was scary. Um, to That's what Aiden said. He said the first time uh, the makeup artist got in his face and he just thought, oh my gosh, I haven't had anybody this close to me. Yeah, it was so weird. Yeah. And, and then I had to actually kiss Aiden. Right. And Normally that, you know, it's not a big deal, but it was, you know, uh -huh. but <laughs> I told my husband, like, he's like, don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. It's, it's going to be fine. And I, yeah, cause you think you got funny. the funk right after you're like, did I, you know, like, yeah, yeah. nobody would drink after each other. Uh, crafty had to be done in a, in a certain way. You couldn't just grab your stuff like you normally could like, and, and it's still that way. I, I, I don't know how much will stay in protocol for film sets, but our life has changed as we knew it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think people are a little more comfortable now because they know more mm -hmm. about what could happen and, you know, being vaccinated is great and everything. But at that point, we just didn't know so much. Right. So uh, everything was scary. Terrifying. 
Um, but I'm glad we got through it. And I think we, you know, we were one of the first projects to kind of push, push on. Um, yeah. So that's pretty incredible. Got it done. We have a finished product <laughs> and it looks great and it's coming out. That's huge. Yes. Um, have you ever felt like that you had an unclean spirit around you? Hmm. <laughs> I do believe in that stuff. And, um, yeah, I've felt the presence of some funky stuff before. Like, I, I don't know if it was a, a being or what, but I, you know, I, I am a person of faith and I have some biblical things that I say in that moment. And honestly, it makes me feel a lot better. And, you know, I, so I do feel protected when that stuff happens. But that being said, I don't like inviting that stuff no, around me. Yeah. And I do have a affinity for horror movies, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, that's really interesting. So you do, you you really pay attention, like wanting to do horror movies, because you said that was on your your bucket list. All obviously, you wrote a uh, a comedy horror for yourself. How do you pick and choose? Where's your limits? Honestly, <laughs> the demonic world. When I'm watching horror, is I, you know, most of the people that watch horror with me know that that's where I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to watch the ones that are too real. I have seen a lot of the ones recently because they wanted to watch them and I'm like, oh, okay. But if it's too crazy, like Exorcist scarred me very yeah. badly yeah. when I was way too young to watch it. Yeah. Uh, maybe five years old. Thanks, dad. Uh -huh. And it. Those are the ones I have a hard time with. Right. That's pretty graphic. Yeah. But but yes, it's always kind of a push and pull with the, you know, because I find a lot of the other types fascinating, but I just, I don't want to, I don't want to get too into it. Uh-huh. No, I'm the same. And when Diego said, we're going to film a horror movie and we're going to do it, we're going to buy this house and do it in this house. <laughs> and I knew I was going to have to live in this house afterwards. I was like, if you open up a corridor <laughs> and I get haunted, yeah. I am not going to be very happy. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> this movie is about the demonic world. And um, so normally it just depends on my character in a movie like that. Um, and, and in this case, it wasn't me. Who was who was having the lines that I I actually just won't say. Yeah. Even as a character, I would have had to say no if uh -huh. I was this other character. Yes. Uh, if yes. I was being offered his part. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. It makes yeah, total it's sense. too real to me. <laughs> yeah. It's too so, real. When do people look for Hunting Souls? Hunting Souls comes out April fifth on all digital platforms. You got to see it. Sophie. Where did you get these marks? What marks? <gasps> if there's an entity around, then it's not a good idea to be doing this. This is not real. This is not real.